Hello and welcome. You are looking at the website Skillshare.com and Skillshare.com is a marketplace for skills and information taught directly by individuals. The platform is designed for short courses where an individual can learn one skill at a time. The courses are available to individuals on their desktop or their mobile device. And each course is designed for an individual to finish their learning by creating a project. Now, individuals that want to learn these skills can get unlimited access to all of the content by paying a monthly or annual price. They can also access their content and download it to their desktop in order to watch on their own time. Skillshare as a learning platform is available to organizations as well as individuals by scholarship. What this means is that there are individuals interested in learning certain skills available to be taught by individuals with certain skills. And these individuals make their knowledge available on Skillshare one course at a time. Now there is no screening process. When you're ready to start a class, all you'll need to do is to come to the Skillshare website and click this button that says start a class and you can begin teaching. Now, according to the Skillshare website, the average individual earns about $3,000 in a calendar year for placing their content on Skillshare. So in this course, we are going to walk through the technical process of getting your course set up on Skillshare so that you can begin teaching individuals looking for the information that you have or can make available. And to get the most recent updates on Skillshare, all you'll need to do is to come to their homepage go to the teaching page and then go to the blog and by reading their blog you'll begin to get a sense for what's happening most recently with the site. Okay so with that thanks and I will see you in the first video. Welcome back. YouTube has long been known as the world's second biggest search engine after its parent company Google. And what this has meant is that individuals have come to YouTube and they have created how-to information in order for people to come to the site, search for a how-to video, and then learn how to do something, a particular skill or a particular set of information. Now, in order to upload to YouTube, there was no particular standard to follow. You just had to make sure that your video met the YouTube community guidelines. Individuals kept analytics and revenue reports on all of the content that they created so that they would know how well their how-to information was doing with those who were viewing it. Individuals were paid through Google's AdSense program, which awarded the funds to accumulate on a monthly basis. However, in early 2018, YouTube changed its partner program and it eliminated individuals that did not have a certain number of hours of watch time as well as subscribers. What that meant was individuals that were just getting started with their channel were not able to participate in generating revenue from YouTube. However, many of the same kinds of courses can now be made available on Skillshare.com where you can make your videos available in order to teach a specific skill and be paid for that short course. And as was mentioned earlier, the courses do not have to be long. In many cases, the courses can be as short as 10 minutes in total length. It means that in cases where individuals feel as if they don't have enough knowledge to create an entire course, can participate in Skillshare if they have at least 10 minutes. So in the next video, we'll talk about the revenue opportunity available with Skillshare, given that you can produce short 10 minute courses. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how you're going to earn revenue as a teacher on Skillshare. And you have two primary methods in which you are going to be paid. First, you're going to earn revenue through royalty payments. And this is going to be based on the number of minutes that students watch your courses over the course of a month. You'll also be paid for the number of premium referrals that you make. So when people sign up for Skillshare and they choose to get a premium account, you will receive $10 for every sign up that comes through your referral link. 
So at the end of the month, Skillshare will calculate the number of minutes that have been watched in your courses, as well as the number of referrals that you'll make, and then they'll pay you on the following 16th of the month. Now you will need to have PayPal set up inside of your account. That is the only method currently that Skillshare has in order to pay you. Now if you are a teacher outside of the US, you will need to go into your PayPal account, go into your profile in My Money, and then make sure that you add in US dollars as a currency for you to receive so that you can receive payments from Skillshare. Now as a point of reference, the students watch your course and they're doing so without having paid for the course, you are not compensated for those minutes. So you want to think about that before you choose to offer a free access link to your course. You will have that opportunity when you get to the promotional section inside of your course creator. Now month to month, Skillshare will contact certain instructors and will allow them to participate in bonuses where they can earn additional revenue based on specific activities. If you'd like to see what some of those activities have been in the past, what you'll want to do is to go to the promotions area of the teacher questions and you can look through some of the past options. Now one of the things you'll notice when you click inside of one of these promotional banners is that you'll need to have been contacted by Skillshare staff directly about the promotion before you can participate. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at a page on Amazon.com, and there's a very simple search here for a USB mic. And this is typically the first thing that people begin to look for when they are considering doing recording or doing teaching online. However, you can run into costs when you start down this path and so in this video what we want to do is we want to look at what are the minimum requirements for you to be able to start recording and creating classes for your Skillshare channel. Now to keep costs down when you're getting started before you begin to earn income you can start with a simple headset microphone and if you have a stereo jacks inside of your PC or if you have USB, you can get the USB version. But typically, you can get a headset where you have a noise canceling feature and that'll be good enough to get started. When you do that, you're going to also want to pick up a windscreen pack and this will give you a little windscreen that you can put on the end of your USB or your headset that will help you to block out some of the noise. This is the equivalent of a pop screen when you are buying a USB microphone. Now typically in newer laptops you will not have two jacks, one for the mic and one for the headphones. You may have only one jack. Now when that's the case, you're going to want to use your USB port for your headset. You can do that with one of these adapters where it'll basically give you the opportunity to use your headset through your USB port. But you are going to probably want some screen recording software. This will allow you to record both PowerPoint and your screen. You can get that through TechSmith and their software is called Camtasia Studio. A Camtasia Studio does run into the hundreds of dollars so if you're not quite sure as to whether or not you're going to be doing this and you haven't really purchased it already, you can purchase Screencast-O-Matic which also has both recording and editing features and for a lower price. Now if you want to include yourself in your videos, as an optional feature you can have a webcam separate from the webcam that comes with your laptop computer. Now you are going to want to use one that does record in HD and there is one such as the Logitech 930E where the resources run inside of the camera and not inside of the computer therefore it will not take up a lot of your memory. Now those are the elements that will get you started and ready to create your courses. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In this video, we want to talk about policies and screening. And Skillshare has a teacher handbook, and you should familiarize yourself with that handbook before you start teaching. We're going to go over a few highlights in that handbook. 
Now, in particular, the big picture of Skillshare is this, that you're going to foster learning for the sake of learning. So you're not doing these courses for lead generation and you're not doing them in order to enrich yourself. What you're really doing is you're imparting knowledge to them in an area that they have decided that they want to learn. We've talked about the fact that each of your courses is going to be created with a class project and we'll be talking about that in the content creation video. One thing that you want to be aware of is that you cannot publish a course on Skillshare that's going to be free elsewhere. That doesn't mean that you cannot use other platforms. You just want to make sure that any place where your course is, that video is not available. So you don't want to have it available on YouTube as well as Skillshare. Now in terms of student contact, Skillshare is stating that they would like student contact to take place through the discussion section and not by email. So you don't want to use your private email to contact students. You want to keep all of your conversation on the Skillshare platform. Now they're pretty clear on the fact that again, these courses should not be self-promotional, nor should they be how to get rich schemes as they call them. What they're also stating is that they don't just want a walkthrough of a platform. They'd like for you to make sure that you have added value to what you're actually teaching people when you're going to be talking about a particular platform. And again, what they don't want you to do is to show people how to resell existing products such as drop shipping or multi-level marketing. Neither one of these courses are going to be allowed. And when it comes to marketing and promoting yourself, they want that to happen in the intro or outro video. They don't want that in the entire course. And to take a step back, Skillshare does not want you to promise your students a specific outcome. Now, again, what you're trying to confer are skills. You're not trying to confer something that they've got to pay for or they're going to want a refund. You're gonna see several sections in their community guidelines as well as their entire policy book about self-promotion. It really means that they're pretty serious about you wanting to keep all of your activity on the Skillshare site and really using the platform for what it is and that is to help people to gain skills. Now we just reviewed some key highlights. When you are in the Skillshare platform, there is the handbook and you can read it from this link and you'll be able to get a sense for everything that Skillshare is looking for and everything that they don't want. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to walk through the process of setting up your account. And to do that, we're going to click become a teacher. Then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. We're going to click start a class. We're then going to sign in with our username and password. You can use Facebook or Google if you prefer. And once you are on the inside, you'll want to pick your class category. Then you'll be asked what your primary goals are. Now Skillshare will bring you directly to the course creation facility. However, we're going to first start by going to the profile area we're going to click the profile and then we're going to click view profile. Once we do that, we're then going to click edit profile. So the first we have latitude where we can change our profile image. We can write information in about who we are. We can write in our social media accounts as well as one personal website. We're also going to be asked to include a section for skills. Now, what you'll notice is that you have your social buttons at the bottom of your profile. Once you have filled them all in, these are all clickable links, as is the link to your website. So all of this will be important as you don't have a lot of promotional opportunities, but you will have individuals that will be curious about your profile and they will be looking to these links. You want to make sure that they are lined up. Now you have another opportunity within your profile to showcase your skills. And when you click this add a project button, what you can do is you can add content that will be representative of who you are and what it is you do. Now you can add images, you can add videos, and you can add links. Now once again, you want to be careful that this content is not going to be promotional, but that it is going to be representative of your projects. 
And what you can do is you can make this project private so that other individuals will not be able to see it by default and you can only show it to those individuals that you want to see it. So again, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to creating this part of your profile. Now, there are some account settings that you want to be aware of. For example, if you go to this account settings button and you go to the link, you are going to see that you're going to be able to set your username. You can also connect your account to Facebook and Twitter and this will allow you to post your updates onto your timeline. So what you're going to do here is you're going to click connect and then you're going to do it again for Twitter. And that people cannot find it on the web. Maybe you want to use or you want to teach this and you don't want everyone to know that you're doing this on Skillshare. You can make your profile private. You can do all of this and hide it from the web. By default, it does show in the web results. By default, your profile is public. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click Save Changes. You also want to look to your email notification section. When you get to the email notification section, you can determine which of the emails you're going to receive and which ones you are not. Generally, if you're going to be engaged in your course and you want to keep up and you really want to make a go of it on Skillshare, you want to start out with all of these emails made available and then over time you can come back to your profile you can determine which ones are overloading you and then you can determine which ones that you're going to tick off now, there are two things when it comes to payments there are payments that you're going to be making to Skillshare and this is going to be with respect to your being subscribed as a student you can add a payment method here you're also going to want to have a payment account for you to be paid and that's going to be a connection to your PayPal account and once you filled in your requirements, your profile is then ready for you to begin teaching classes. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to start working on our course outline. And you'll notice that we are using Google Slides. Now, if you use Microsoft PowerPoint, that's going to be pretty much the same thing. If you want to import your PowerPoint presentation into Google Slides, Perhaps you're going to have someone proofread it or you're going to work on it with someone. You can do that by importing that presentation into Google. So we're going to start a new presentation. And then we're going to give this presentation a title. Now one of the ways before you think about how you're going to design the course or how you want it to appear is to think about the content and what you actually want to teach someone. And you want to start by taking each of the individual steps and then creating at least one slide for all of those steps. So in this case, we're going to create several slides and each of those slides will represent either one step or one video. And what you want to do is you want to create one video for your introduction, another one for the conclusion, and then if you're going to have sections in your course, you're going to want to have at least one video introducing the section. So as you think about your content, you're going to want to think about how many sections is your content going to be. You should have one slide explaining that section and then one slide explaining each step within the section. So what we've done is we put in our introduction slide, put in our conclusion slide, so once we've outlined the course, we can determine then that each slide is going to represent one video. And so now what we want to do is we want to go back. So what we want to do is we want to go back and we want to write in a narration script that will also double as a PowerPoint slide. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to write in to the slide enough information to give an individual something to look at without writing everything that we're going to talk about during our presentation. What you want to try to do in Skillshare is you want to try to communicate one specific skill and idea. You can always go back and you can break up your course into several ideas, but you're trying to teach one concept for people to be able to do one thing. And so what you may want to do at this point is you may want to narrate at least one slide. And then you'll be able to tell exactly how long your course is going to be and whether or not you're going to need to break it up into several pieces or if you have one that's going to be about the right length. 
And now once you have all of the slides that you're going to be doing, once you have your outline, you can either narrate it or you can talk between the points while the PowerPoint scrolls in either case, but, but you want to use the outline communicating all of the information that you want to get across concisely. What you also want to think about is that all of these lessons should lead to your students being able to put something together, to do something that they can either display or that they can put together and post onto the site. In this case, there are probably several instances where an individual can actually take the content that you're looking at and then turn it into some kind of project. So we're going to be designing that project in the course creation video. Now, if you want to redesign the look and you don't want to just use plain black and white and you want to do something that's going to be a consistent brand, you can do that. But the very first thing you want to be concerned about is the content. And that's what we've done in this video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In this video, we want to discuss the subject of whether or not you should use private label rights or PLR content in order to create your courses. Now, Skillshare says that you must be the primary content producer behind your work. Even if you own the content, you may not publish content that you are not directly teaching yourself. So that means then that you cannot upload videos that were created by others and you probably want to be careful about creating content videos from information that you have not directly changed in order to create your courses. Another guideline from Skillshare is that classes may not draw from external materials that did not originate with you, the teacher. So again, that is another guideline that you are going to need to follow. And then content can only be uploaded to Skillshare once. Repetitive content can be removed. So again, this is another guideline that you're going to want to think about as you consider whether or not you want to use PLR or private label rights content. So the spirit and letter of the law when it comes to Skillshare and content is that they want the content to come from you. They want it to be something that you have generated from your own knowledge and experience. And so in most cases, this will go beyond the case where you are simply rewriting private label rights content. If it feeds into the knowledge that you have and that knowledge comes out in the course, it's probably permissible. You are purchasing the content, you are changing it, and you are simply transferring the work from one person to another. That's actually not the spirit of Skillshare. The key is whether or not your students are learning new information. And so if you are using any kind of content, whether it's private label rights or even from a different author, it should be invisible to the student and it should come out in what you are able to teach and what you have already learned. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You were looking at the overview slide that we created in a previous video. And one of the ways that you can create your course content is that you can scroll through your PowerPoint presentation and then you can give discussion between each of the points. And so basically what you're going to do is you're going to scroll through your PowerPoint, you'll stop and then do some explanation, you'll move on to the next step. And as you continue to do this, you will complete your slides in a particular period of time. Now it's recommended that again, you stick to breaking up your content into videos based on subjects as you talk through each subject, what you're going to do is you're going to complete the thought on each point. Another way to record the video is to discuss what people are seeing on your screen. And as you have seen in previous videos, you can demonstrate what's happening on your screen and then giving your viewer the opportunity to experience what they should be doing. And when you're teaching and you're screencasting a web page, one of the things that you can do is you can use the F11 button to hide the address bar. So in this case, if we click F11, our address bar will disappear. If we click F11 again, our address bar will come back. When we are demonstrating in full screen mode, if we need to switch between tabs, all we'll need to do is to click the control button and then we'll need to click the tab button that'll move over one tab where we don't have to stop the video in order to continue recording. Now, another way to do videos is to do a talking head video 
where you have the camera trained on you as the one we are viewing here in this section. And you are looking at the camera, you are explaining the concept, and you can also have captions inside of your video. And of course, you can also do a demonstration style video where basically you are showing a concept, you have your camera trained on the concept you are doing, and then you are speaking through your outline. Now you can combine certain elements into videos if you have some kind of video editing software and you're looking at a previous version of Camtasia Studio and you'll see a timeline and we're going to do this in a separate video. But it's important to show you here because you can see the timeline and all we would need to do is to add the different pieces of the video into the timeline. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at Screencast-O-Matic and you'll see here that Screencast-O-Matic has the ability for you to be able to do both talking head videos and you'll see that you can use your webcam or your screen and you can do them both together where you'll have your screen being recorded and a piece of your webcam video in the video that you're producing. And of course Camtasia Studio has the very same effect. Now when you're producing a webcam video, one of the things you're going to want to decide is the resolution of the video. So for example, we're going to look at the tool in Camtasia where we'll take a look at recording our camera. When we get to that screen, that's the one that you're looking at, we're going to click Format. And when you look at the format, you're going to see that there's an output size and you can determine what the output size is going to be and you're going to want to think about this when you are producing the video that you want to produce a talking head video where you're taking up the entire screen with your background you can do that however you're going to want to make sure that the resolution is going to be something like 1280 by 720 now if you decide that you're going to just place your webcam video inside of your presentation or your screencast you'll want to leave the default settings where they are and they're going to be about 640 by 360. When that's the case, you can leave your resolution at that point and then you can apply it as is. Now in this case, the webcam is being covered for the sake of this video. However, this is how it would actually work if you were going to either edit or do a talking head video inside of Camtasia. Now the point of showing you this is so that you'll know that by having Camtasia or Screencast-O-Matic you have just about everything you need in order to record all the videos that you'll need in order to do something in ScreenShare. Now obviously if you're going to want to do a demonstration video you're going to want to use a camera of some kind. Now when you're recording PowerPoint you want to make sure that the aspect ratio of your recording is going to be correct. And you can do that in your screen by going to the design tab and then going to your slide side. And you want to make sure that you're using the widescreen or 16 by 9 recording view so that when you do your slideshow, it's going to appear in widescreen. This will mean that it'll have the right aspect. It's going to show up right when you get ready to either edit the video or you produce the video and you get it ready for a Skillshare. Also, the screen where you record your presentation or your screencast matters and it's going to be a lot easier for you to be able to create a high definition video if you use the right size screen. So if you're using a second screen and you're using a laptop screen, what you want to do is you want to try to find a screen and record on the screen that has the right aspect ratio. So for example, you're going to want to use one that either has 1920 by 1080 or one that has 1280 by 720, both of which are here. And what that will do is that'll give you the right aspect ratio. Of course, if you can record in the resolution at 1920 by 1080, that's going to be the most conservative. And then you will always have a high definition video, even though that's slightly higher than required by Skillshare currently. Another aspect of your recording is going to be a lot easier if you use two screens. And when you use two screens, here's what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to keep your script on one screen and you're going to be able to record on the other one. And you're going to be able to do that inside of your slideshow menu. And you're going to be able to open and use what's called use the presenter view. 
you want to make sure that this is ticked in your slideshow menu. So in this case, what we can do is we can then turn on our slide presentation and you'd have a full screen presentation while you discussed. But so that you can see the other view, we're going to switch the display settings and we're going to swap out the other view. Now this is the presenter view and this will be on your other screen. So while you're scrolling through, what you'll notice is that the next screen actually shows up and you'll be able to see what's going to come up next. On the left side, you'll see what you have currently. On the right side is what's coming up. So you'll be able to get a look at the next animation in addition to having your notes here in this section. So you can have the animation and the notes you'll know what's coming up next and then you'll be able to talk through your points. Now for the sake of this video, we're now going to switch back to the slideshow view. And you'd be able to use your recording as you scroll through. Now in order to show different places in the presentation, there's a way to do that. And to do that, we're going to switch back to our presenter view. And if we needed to skip to the end to find a particular slide, what we would do is we would click this See All Slides button, we'd skip to the slide where we want to be, and then this is what would then appear on the screen where we are presenting. When we want to go back to our place, we'd go back, click this See All Slides button, and then go to the place where we want to be. And again, if you're using your presenter view, this is going to be on your second screen. What's actually going to appear while you're recording is going to be what you're seeing here on the left side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch back to our slideshow. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our screen and we're going to do that by clicking our show taskbar button. And then we'll be able to pick up our browser again. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about editing our video, and we are inside of Camtasia Studio. So if you have another editing program, you'll need to make sure that you understand how to use your editing program with the basic features we're going to be explaining here inside of Camtasia Studio. Now, one of the very first things you'll notice is at the very top, in this button, you'll notice that this video is being edited at the resolution of 1280 by 720. We'd like to then change that resolution if we can, and we'd like to change that resolution to the maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080 if possible. Now, in some cases, this will not be possible given how you recorded the video. However, we're going to seek to make this a larger size when we edit. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice is that you have on this timeline, you have the sound and video. Now, this file has actually already been edited. So for the sake of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to delete the file. And then we're going to resave the project. Now, when you are recording inside of Camtasia or Screencast-O-Matic, one of the first things you're going to do with your recording and your timeline is you're going to save the entire project as a new file so that all of the changes you make will be saved inside of the project file. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go to file. And we're going to save this project as a new project. So you'll see now at the very top, we've renamed this file as USP number one. And again, this file is the one that we just recorded and we now have it inside of our project file. So in Camtasia, in order to work with this file, we're then going to add the file to our timeline. And what you're going to notice is that this file looks totally different than the one that we just deleted, which was the completed file. Now, what we need to do in order to edit this file is we need to listen to the entire recording and watch it in real time is so that not only will we be able to make changes to any mistakes that we might make, we'll also be able to make quality changes that we feel differently about than we did when we actually did the speaking. One of the things you'll notice on this timeline is you'll see these three bars. And this is indicating that there were three loud sounds made during the recording. And we made those sounds so that we would be able to mark on the timeline 
when we needed to find a mistake and then correct it. So in all of the places where you see these three bars, those are the times when we clapped loud enough so that we were close to the mic so that we would be able to create an effect on the audio timeline that we would be able to look at and know this is where we need to zero in on to find where our mistakes are. And so basically what we'll need to do is if we're listening in real time, we'll be able to go to these locations, listen to it again, and then edit out the mistakes. Now in Camtasia, that's a simple matter of using the cursor and then the scissors. And then once again, we can go to this area. We would listen to it, of course, but we would then cut this part out and then we can do it again by cutting these parts out. Now again, once again, you'd want to listen to find out where your mistakes are, but you'd be listening for the mistakes that you noted during your actual recording. So again, this is going to be something that you want to do while you're recording so as to make it easy when you are doing the editing. Now at each step along the line, we'd like to then go to our file and then continue saving so that again our file and all of the changes that we're making will be saved in our project file. These changes will not affect the original recording. They'll only be effective inside of the project file that we're creating. And again, you're going to do the same thing if you're using Screencast-O-Matic. Once you've listened in real time, you've edited out all the mistakes, you can then save your project file. And then once you exit the project file, you are then ready to record a new video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a few steps to increase the quality of the audio in our video. And you're going to notice that the video that has been edited is on our timeline. And you may notice that there is background noise in the recording that you want to have removed. And if you do that, and what we can do is we can remove the background noise using a feature in Camtasia. And you'll notice that there are a couple of features. First, there is an enable noise removal feature, removing clipping and clicks. There's also volume leveling. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at noise removal. And basically what we want to do is we want to look at our audio file and we want to find one or two seconds where we can hear the background noise. And basically what we can do is we can take a portion of this video. We're going to stretch out our cursor. And we're going to stretch it out on the actual audio file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our audio menu and we're going to click enable noise removal. And what that will do is that will take this portion of the background noise and it will remove it from the rest of the recording. So if you know that you have background noise in this area and you want to have it removed, all you need to do is to find a section of it, highlight it, then click enable noise removal so that that background noise can be removed. What you can also do is you can remove any clipping or clicks that will remove additional background noise that may interfere with your message. And then the other thing that we can do is we can use volume leveling. Now, if you have a number of different parts of your video and the volume is not consistent, what you can do is you can enable volume leveling. And what that will do with the audio file is it'll make sure that there is a minimum amount of variation between the volume in different places. And what you can do is you can click enable audio leveling. You'll see that the file will have different and it's a good idea to then listen to the file. Then you'll be able to tell if the volume leveling has actually done something for your recording or if it hasn't. You can then disable it by unticking the enable volume leveling box. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Skillshare asks that you add value to any demonstration video that you do. And there are effects that you can create inside of any video editing program. So for example, when you come to a certain point in the video and you need to make a point on screen, in Camtasia, what you can do is use callouts, you can draw arrows, and you can point to things and highlight them on screen. Now, this is obviously not a Camtasia tutorial. However, 
You can use these effects to draw attention to things and then add value to your video by using callouts. Screencast-O-Matic will have different effects, but what you want to do is you want to pick the points where you need to re-emphasize something and then you want to use the callouts to help you to do that. So it might be that you would decide that you want to highlight different aspects of the video. So for example, we can come to a certain point in the video. We can decide that we want to highlight something here. We would use one of the callouts and all we would need to do is to drop the call out here and have it appear where we want it to be. So whatever video software you're using, you want to use the annotation effects to add to your edited video so that it would do a better job of explaining than just your demonstration or your PowerPoint video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at Biteable.com and Biteable is one of the animated video creators suggested by makers of Skillshare courses in order to create your promotional video. Because you'll be able to create different kinds of video from your actual instruction, this is a video you'll be able to use on YouTube and social media to get people excited about your course. And naturally, there are other animated video creators available such as Animoto, GoAnimate, which has a 14-day free trial, My Simple Show, which is a whiteboard video creator which uses your existing PowerPoint when you import it, and Animatron, and this is just a small sampling of the video creators available where you can work in the cloud, create a promotional video, download that video, and use it on your YouTube channel. Now you'll select the one whose pricing that you like and then you can sign up. Now in some cases you'll want to make sure that the video that you're using even if it is under a trial that it will not have the watermark. For example if we were to sign up for Go Animate, you would notice that all videos made during the 14 day trial period will have the free trial watermark. Now, as you can see here, we've created a video inside of Biteable in about seven minutes time. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the sound down. We're just going to click play so that you can see it. Now, in this case, Biteable requires you to purchase their subscription in order to remove watermarks or to download the video. However, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and publish this video as it is. Now that the video has been published, we're going to click the YouTube button. And now our video has been submitted to YouTube. And our video is now on our YouTube channel and now ready for playing and sharing. Now you'll notice that the video has a branding logo on it. However, if you choose to upgrade to their premium version, you would not need to have this branding on your video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to go to the Teach area. And we're going to click Create a Class. And we're now going to start the process of uploading our content. So we're going to now click this Upload Videos, and we're going to upload the videos into Skillshare. Now each of the videos will probably take approximately 30 minutes in order to get fully uploaded, provided that your videos fit the parameters of short videos between 2 and 5 minutes. And now that we've uploaded, you'll notice that this video is now in process and it will take approximately 30 minutes. We can continue to refresh the page in order to see and check on the status. So what we've done now is we've uploaded all of the videos to our video lessons. So while this process is happening we want to click class info. We want to go ahead and write in our class title. Once we've given our class a title and a description we then want to move to the class project and we want to design a project based on the content that we have already placed in the course and we want to give our students something tangible to do and something they can demonstrate and post to the course. Of course, if you have a file that you want to attach, you can do that, 
or if you want to upload a photo. What you're going to do next is you're going to choose a category for the course. You're going to choose a subcategory. And then you're going to decide whether or not this is going to be a free or paid course. If it's going to be free, you can designate that here. If it's going to be a course that's part of the paid membership, you can leave this as the default. You're then going to designate the level that the student should be on in order to take the course. And then you're going to write in skills. And now that we see our videos are all uploaded and ready to be viewed, we can now make sure that our titles reflect what we want them to be. And once we do that, we can then hit the publish button. For now though, there are a few more things that we're going to do to our course and we're going to hit the save draft button to make sure that all of our changes are saved. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now in the video lesson section of our course and the very first video is actually going to be a sample video that individuals, whether or not they are part of Skillshare or not, they're going to be able to watch the video and this will be the one that will tell people whether or not they want to continue to watch the entire course. So you do want to make sure that this video generates enough excitement for the rest of your course. Now one aspect of this video is if you go to the right side, you'll see there that there is a file button and you can place a course image on top of this video and this will appear for the cover image for your entire course. So you want to make sure that this video is going to be at least 1280 by 720. And once you've done that, you can pick this image up from your hard drive. Now, since this design will be the one that will entice people and get their attention, this may be something that you want to have designed on a site like Fiverr or Upwork. So now once you have placed your cover image and your title reflects what you want it to, you are then ready to publish your course. So at this point, you can either save the draft or click publish, and then you will be ready to begin promoting. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to start the process of making referrals with our course. And we're going to need to have a published course in order to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the Publish button. Skillshare will ask you if you want to make sure that your course is published. You'll click Yes. And now we'll go and click build your marketing plan. Now, once your course has been published, what you can do is you can begin the process of promoting your course. And you can do that by clicking this promote button. And you're going to see that you're going to have some options available to you. In particular, you can share your referral link through your social media, and you'll see that link here. You can add in email addresses from this page, and you can also import contacts from Gmail. So in this case, we're going to write in an email. And we're then going to click Send. That person is then going to get an email. You'll see that email, and then that person can click this link to view the class. They'll also get a special offer to join Skillshare Premium. Now remember, they sign up for Skillshare Premium you will then get a $10 referral fee. And as an added benefit, you're likely to get individuals that if they sign up as a premium student, they will then be watching your course where you'll then start getting credit for the minutes that they're watching. So you'll want to use this instructor link whenever possible. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the things that you'll want to consider before you finish publishing your course is that typically when you start a course and you don't publish it right away, you'll get an email from the community manager at Skillshare and they will be encouraging you to become part of the next Teach Challenge. And when you click this link that says Teach Challenge, you'll be taken to an opportunity to join a course at the beginning of the month where Skillshare representatives will be going over some of the basics of Skillshare and how you can be successful. 
when you get to the page, you'll notice that there are some contest requirements. And when you finish these two courses, you'll be eligible for certain bonuses that Skillshare makes available, again, to incentivize you to know and understand the rules. And all you'll need to do is to click this join button and you will then be part of the course. And your eligibility will be determined by completing your class project in the first five days of the month and then completing your course by the end of the month. And once you are part of the course, you can then begin having discussions with some of the other students in that course. If you go to the project section, you'll then be able to start a project, which again is part of your class requirement. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in the last video, you noticed that there were this discussion, and we looked at these discussions. And one of the things that you want to take note of is that you want to do the very same thing in your course in order to engage students. Of course, your project is already there because it's already created. Now, having looked at a course that we're taking, we now want to take a look at the course that we're teaching. Now the place to do this is on the inside of your course and you'll notice right down at the bottom you'll see tabs that mirror the tabs that you have when you're taking a course. And within the community tab is really the area where Skillshare would prefer that you have contact with your students. There are no email facilities because it's their preference that you keep everything inside of this course. And in fact, if your students have chosen to do so, they will receive notification of this announcement when you make it inside of your course. So what you're going to do is you're going to post a question to start a conversation. What you'll see when you begin to write in your question, you'll have a box that says email all students. You'll click that link and then you'll give your email a subject line. And once you have your subject line, you'll then click post. And then your discussion will be there and emailed to individuals in the course. So now that you know where to have interaction with your students, you're now ready to start looking to promote your course to get students in. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, you have now walked through the technical process of putting your course on Skillshare, and your course is now published. You now have a referral link, you're now part of the new teacher program, and you are ready to begin promotion. And while you're involved in the new teacher course, there are things that you can do to the course by editing the course and then taking advantage of Skillshare's built-in systems to promote your course. And of course, one of the other things that you can do to increase your opportunities to generate income is to teach other courses. However, it's a good idea to be fully aware of promotional strategies so that people will find your course. And because part of your payment structure revolves around recruiting new individuals to come to the site and take on the premium account, this takes a different way of promoting the opportunity. So while staying engaged through the community and through the class project are good things to do, you'll want to exercise the full range of promotional opportunities so that you can maximize your income with Skillshare. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.